this time on Open Framework Super Basics, I'm making a mildly offensive belligerent clock to go into my studio using push matrix, pop matrix, animating, using custom typefaces and building In this episode of Open Frameworks, um, we're going to have a look at using different kinds of typefaces, how we can load our own custom typefaces. We're going to look back at um, push matrix and pop matrix, which we used for drawing before, where we can manipulate parts of the screen, do calculation, move things around. And we're going to make a piece of work, which I'm politely calling belligerent clock. So if you like swearing, there's going to be loads of swearing, sort of, a little bit, maybe. Uh, so let's just get on with it. Let's make something. Uh, this came partly out of a question in response to the previous video where I was using the OF draw bitmap string, which allows you to use a system typeface and just print stuff out to the screen. And when we were using OF translate, the text wasn't rotating. So this question came up, and if we use custom typefaces, we can manipulate them pretty much any way that we like. So we saw from the previous video how we can use OF translate and push matrix and pop matrix to make complicated animations um, without necessarily needing to understand all the maths about how things are located. And what it allowed us to do was to take our drawing canvas and say, we want to draw an animation and we can move the drawing canvas to where we want our animation, draw our animation, move the drawing canvas back, which allows us to be able to do all kinds of things, including rotating the drawing canvas, drawing animation, and letting the drawing canvas come back. So we're going to use the OF true type font command to load up our own type manipulate that on screen and then draw and move it about. And it's going to work a little bit like this. So start a new project in Open Frameworks. And in my header file, I am going to use the OF true type font object, which allows me to load any kind of typeface that I like. And I'm just making an instance of it called font. So now I have this object called font that I can load a typeface into and call that to be able to draw itself out to screen. And what I've done is I've used a typeface that I've got and I've put it into the bin data folder inside my project. So here's my project and inside the bin folder when the binary executable is made, there's the data folder and inside the data folder, I have this typeface. Now there's a typeface that comes with um, uh, Open Frameworks, which looks like this. You can put in any other that you have rights to, but if you're distributing, you need to check that you've got the rights to do that. And I've got a license for uh, Terminal Grotesque, which is one of the typefaces that um, I use for some of the graphics here. So we've got Terminal Grotesque here. And that's loaded inside the data folder and I've got the name of it. And in Open Frameworks, I say, please make a true type font object, call it font. And in my CPP file, I've set the background color to be black. And I've set the frame rate just to be one frame per second for the moment. And I'm using font.load and then the name of my true type typeface. And when we load it in, we have to specify a size that we want it to be loaded in at. And I've said, make it pretty big, and I'm loading it in at 60 point types. So it's quite a, a big typeface. And ignore the other stuff. This is just something I was mucking around with and making, and we'll reveal it as we go through. In the draw, I'm using OF set color. And then to use this, I just say font draw string and I could pass it a variable and turn that into a string. I could pass it a variable that's got a string in it. In this instance, I'm just going to say, put hello on the screen at 100 across and 100 down. And when I run it, there, hello. Typeface of my choosing on screen, any color I like, anywhere I like. Really, really cool. 
one of the things that we can now do is this will now obey. I'm going to comment these lines here because I made a loop. So I've made a simple loop and I'm saying for integer i, well, it's uh, less than 360 and then i plus equals 10. So this is going to count from 0 to 360 in tens, 10, 20, 30, blah, 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 all the way up to 360. And then I'm saying use the push matrix. So it takes our drawing style, freezes it, we can manipulate it, and we use pop matrix, it'll release it and let it come back. So I've got push matrix here, and I've got a matching pop matrix just down here. And then I'm going to say, OF translate, so move across so that the zero, zero point, what was at the top uh, left of the screen, is now in the middle. So translate across half the width and half the height. And then I'm going to say, rotate a number of degrees. In this instance, I'm going to say rotate by I. So this should go through our loop with I 10, 20, 30, up to 360. Freeze the screen using the push matrix, rotate it by 10 degrees, then 20, then 30, then 40, then 50, so on, all the way through 360, drawing hello on the screen here, and then I'm freezing it with a pop matrix. So what we get is awesome. And there, we've just got the word hello rotated all the way around. And that's beautiful. We can change it for all kinds of different words if we like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change it for the word seconds. And I'm going to use another command, which you've seen before, which is I'm going to get the time. And I'm going to do this rotation, which we're doing with rotate i degrees. But I'm going to do a rotation before that. So I'm going to rotate once and then I'm going to rotate again, saying rotate the degrees and get the seconds. So seconds will give us naught to 60 or not to 59 times it by six, which gives us 360. And then what I want to do is say, if we're at naught seconds, have the type this way up and then have it tick around. Now the type would ordinarily be sideways like this. So I'm going to say start off minus 90 degrees and then move around. So if I tell this to draw now, that is beautiful. So it's drawing me the word seconds on the screen. And every second it's ticking around. The only thing is I can't see where the first thing that I'm drawing is. So I've drawn 36 of them and they're moving the beginning point depending upon how many seconds we are into the minute. So what I'm going to do is at the beginning of my draw loop I'm saying set the color to be red and then at the end after I've drawn the first one, the first of my seconds, the next 35 I want to be a different color. So I'm going to say set them OF color to be white. So the first one will be red, because at the beginning of the draw loop I set it to be red, and then everything else after that will be white. So there we go, ticking away. Seconds. So this is making the beginning of a clock. You can see where we're going for belligerent clock here. So I've made my type drawing to screen using push matrix, pop matrix, rotating, and then getting the additional rotation. There's one more thing I want to do with this, and then we'll move on a little bit. It's kind of cute, but it's skewed. And that's partly because after I've done the transformation, I'm telling it to draw down and across. So I will have my object rotating off center. So I'm just going to say, draw the string at zero, 
zero. And at the end of it changing to a new color, I'm going to say fade out. So I'm going to say red, green, and blue in my set color, which you've looked at before. And then I can add an alpha value. So I'm going to say get I and take 100 away from it. So it'll fade like this. So now I'm rotating and as I rotate, I'm telling it to fade out and also tick around. So now I've got seconds and I'm going to take exactly this code and replicate it twice more. But instead of calling seconds, I'm going to call minutes, then I'm going to call hours and offset the loops a tiny bit. So instead of drawing at zero, zero, I'm going to draw across for the minutes and then across for the hour. So I'll have three loops running inside each other like this. So the second loop, I'm just going to uncomment here and walk through it really quick. We set the color instead of at the beginning of the draw, we set the color to be red here in my, in my minutes loop, I set the color to be blue. And again, 360 degrees plus 10. So it's um, not 30, uh, not 10, 20, etc. all the way up. I've done all this rotation and I use the push matrix and pot matrix and I do the same again, push matrix, pot matrix, translate to the middle of the screen. And instead of OF get seconds, I say OF get minutes. And again, it's in 60s and I take away 90 degrees. So instead of starting the minutes here, I start the minutes at the top and then tick all the way around. And I'm just going to comment this out, giving some of the game away. Font dot draw string. Minutes and I'm going to move across a little bit in the X. So I'm going to say minutes 280 and then zero down. And now I'm going to do the same again. And after I've set the color at the end in the loop, I'm going to set it rather than being blue. All of the rest after the first one is going to be white fading out with the alpha value just here. So this should draw my seconds in the middle. And there, my minutes outside. And we'll let this run for a little bit and I might speed it up. You can see my minutes ticking away and my seconds ticking away. And when my seconds come up around to the top, we'll see the minute go dunk and click through one more. And all we're doing is saying, draw these things to the screen and just using the push matrix, pot matrix, and the rotation to change where we're drawing. So the program kind of thinks that it's drawing these all in the same place, but we're shifting the screen around underneath it as we're doing these drawing loops. So as we're coming around to the top of the minute, bingo, it moves minutes. So we've got seconds and minutes. You can see where we're going next. And I'm going to come down to hours and I'm going to begin the color um, zero red, zero green, zero blue. So we're going to be doing hours in blue. And because this gives us uh, 24 hours, I need to do a slightly different calculation. So instead of multiplying the degrees by six, because we had not 60 times 60 is 360. Here we've got not to 24 by 30 means that when the hour is 24, it'll be all the way up um, and so on. So it'll give us two lots of 12 hours around a normal sort of analog style clock for my rotation. And again, I'm going to do the fade out at the end. And when I draw the string on the screen, I'm going to say 
draw it 400 pixels across from the middle. And I should now have, run this full screen, hours, minutes, and seconds. So you can see it's just coming up to quarter to three in the afternoon where I am now. And you, you know, your time will vary if you run this up yourself. So we've got the seconds in the middle ticking away. And we'll see again, it clicks the minute in the minute at the top and then the hours around the outside. So we've built ourselves a live clock that's getting the time from the system and manipulating using these loops. And there we go. But actually, I was feeling a bit belligerent and I was working through this question the other day and I didn't want to say hours, minutes, and seconds. I just wanted to say As Eleanor in the good place would say, fork this shirt. Or flock these sheep. So now I have my belligerent clock that runs round saying that. And then I thought, well, no, actually, what I want to do is a little bit more. It's not this. It could be that. So then I thought... What I might do is instead of saying this, I could say this or that. So I'm saying here, instead, up in my minutes, I said, get the minutes and mod it by two. We've seen this mod before, basically divide everything by two and find out what the remainder is. And if that is zero, what that means is this number is even. This is a really quick way to take any number, mod it by two, and if it's equal to zero, it's even. If it's one, it's odd. And just say, draw this. Otherwise, draw that. So every even minute, it says, fork this shirt. Every odd minute, it says, fork that shirt. As I'm noodling through my code. So there. Got my clock. And we'll see that this change to that. I'm going to let it run. We come up to the top of the hour or top of the minute. Fork this, fork that, fork this, fork that. And that's what we get. And I thought, actually, no, that's a little, I want to do other things. I want to fix that stuff. I want to cook that. I want to smash that. I want to hit that. I want to love that. I want to hate that. And so uh, I thought about all these words that the clock could have on the second hand. So I made a vector. It was a big list. I can put things into this list. And I said, I'm going to put strings into it. And I'm going to call the vector words. So it starts out a list with nothing. And then I put words inside strings. And then I can go through and have a look what's in there in the vector. And then up at the top here, here is where I say, take the vector words, which I can put strings in, and then put this one in the first position, this one in the second position, and so on. So I've got love and hate and clean and make and smash and stop and like and bump and fix and burn and smoke and toast and roast and cook and mash and kick and hack and smack and check and forget. And you could put whatever you like in there. But it's just this list of words. And then, at the beginning of my draw loop, I say, make a new string called word, and then find out, using words.signs, how big my vector of words, how many words there are in there. Which means I don't have to remember, I just put a new word in there and then say, how big is it? And it tells me. And I say, okay, great, use OF random to roll a random number between zero and however many words there are in this vector called words, how many strings there are in there. Grab that one by saying, look at words and go to whatever random number position we rolled and pull that word out and put it into the string variable called word. And instead of saying draw string, whatever word you want to put in here, Draw string, 
whatever word we just put into this variable called word. So it'll now pull that string out and draw it. And it'll look a bit like this. And because we've set the frame rate to be one frame per second, it's only rolling this draw loop and choosing this word once a second. So now it ticks away choosing a random word for me on the second hand. And we'll see again in a moment, we'll get to the top. And instead of saying, toast this, forget that, love this, hate this, it'll change to that. So the second hand is choosing every second a different word to be on there. The minute hand is choosing this or that, depending upon whether the minute is odd or even. And the hours are always, are always like that. So it's gone from this to that, and this will keep doing it. But actually, I didn't like this so much. I think possibly it's because the word length is different. So the second hand gets bigger and smaller. And I think what I'd probably do is make sure that um, maybe use a monospace typeface. So the width of every letter is the same. So like a courier or something like that. And then make sure that all the words in my word list are the same length. So the second hand, the words will change, but it'll stay the same length as it spins around. I think that would work. And you could experiment with your own typefaces. You could put emojis in. You could grab graphics if you wanted. You could run bits of a webcam in and move them around. We'll look at webcams again. And here it is, up to the top. So that's, that's what I thought I'd do. And I'm just going to put this back to the... The simple sentiment that I had and that's my belligerent clock and I think what I might do actually I, I fancy hanging this on the wall in the studio so I've got the code and what I'm gonna do I think maybe uh, in a side video I'm gonna pull this code onto a Raspberry Pi a tiny little 30 buck computer, plug it into one of the screens that I've got, put a frame around it, hang it on the wall, just to remind me, what time is it? So all the code for my belligerent clock is on uh, the GitHub repo, the, um, the link for which is down below. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you fancy making it or do you do variations of your own, please, um, I'd love to see what you're doing. And uh, if you like this, hit the subscribe, leave me some comments, and I will see you on the next video in Open Framework Super Basics.